Well, that went all right, didn't it? Aye. Happen. <laughs> it was a grand evening, and I'll tell you that for now. I had more fun than a ferret in a ginnel. <laughs> I was just trying to make Karen feel comfortable. Yeah. Cos I could tell how shy and timid she was. <laughs> and can I just say, it's not a big deal, but you can buy Eccles cakes in Waitrose. <laughs> It's not some magical formula guarded by Ken Barlow and buried in the Hovis mines of Accrington. <laughs> it's a little cake with currants in it that most people don't like very much. Not that it's a big deal. <laughs> this isn't about the Eccles cakes, it's about you. You spent the whole evening acting like you were embarrassed about the life you're now leading. You seemed intent on impressing her for some reason. You don't honestly think I've still got a thing for her, do you? No, of course not. She might still have a thing for you. She's got a funny way of showing it. Well, she's got a funny way of doing everything, hasn't she? Judging by how much you were laughing at all her jokes. Oh, we just had a couple of laughs. And when you say a couple, do you mean 18? <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Why? I'm still cleaning my teeth. Well, just spit it on floor and rub it in with the foot. <laughs> Toby, where on earth are you? I was ready to be collected ten minutes ago. I don't care about double yellow lines. You're a bloody surgeon. Doesn't that come with some perks? <laughs> well, get a flashy light! <laughs> he sends his love. <laughs> Anna, do you trust Toby? In terms of, you know, being faithful? Toby is my rock. By which I mean he just sits there gathering moss. <laughs> He wouldn't have the initiative to cheat. Why do you ask? Oh, it's nothing. It's just... Lee was contacted by an ex-girlfriend from years ago. She came round the house. Oh, I see. Uh, how did they behave together? Were they close? Did they flirt? Actually, they just flung verbal abuse at each other. That is close. They might as well be married. <laughs> Would you be jealous of Toby's ex? I'd be jealous of her for having split up with him. <laughs> Why? Are you jealous? I don't know. A bit. But they only met up because I encouraged it. Well, that was silly of you. It's one thing to trust your husband, it's another to dangle temptation. I didn't dangle her. Did I? This is one of life's tests. The correct response when your husband says he wants to meet up with the next girlfriend is to immediately set fire to all of his clothes and feed his ties through a paper shredder. <laughs> because that, Lucy, is love. <laughs> talk. I've been chatting to Anna about this whole thing of what to do about exes. That's a worry. I've always assumed that Anna's exes weren't stuffed and mounted in a display cabinet. <laughs> she gave me some advice. Go on. She said she thinks that temptation can be a dangerous thing in a marriage and that it should be avoided at all costs. Right. So do you know what I think we should do? What? I think we should do the exact opposite of what Anna would do. What, you're going to actually attach a pair of testicles to me? I don't ever want us to end up like Toby and Anna Lee. Of course you should stay in touch with Karen. In fact, I think I should invite her back here. I think I made a bad impression last time. May I come across as prickly? She didn't notice. Oh, so I did come across as prickly? Of course not. More like a battle axe. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was putting on a stupid act last time. I need to show her the real me. I am what I am. Please don't tell her you need to show her the real you and then sing I am what I am. <laughs> it might just confuse things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was lovely. You say <gasps> I am stuffed. Oh, there's spotted dick and custard for pudding. Uh, or a lighter dessert of panna cotta, if you prefer. Panna cotta? You can't get that in Surely. <laughs> you can. You go to the shop. Right, it's very nice of you to have me back. Especially after I took the mick out of your husband so much. <laughs> That's why I wanted you back. It's hard work mocking him by myself all these years. <laughs> Has he uh, ever told you about the perm? I don't believe he has. It wasn't a perm, it was a demi-wave. Oh, it's such a shame there aren't any photographs. So I could show you what an absolute pillock he looked. 
Oh, hang on, wait oh. a minute, there is. <laughs> oh. He wanted to look like that bloke off in excess. <laughs> oh my God, he looks more like Steffi Graf. <laughs> I, at least I'm not the one who tried to pierce my own ears with a staple gun. Oh, oh God, yeah. I ended up in casualty. <sighs> hey, that was the same night we got engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I came out of hospital with a bandage on my head and a ring on my finger. Do you remember? No. <laughs> oh, that's charming, that is. We never got engaged, Karen. Y yes, we did. You put one of those old-fashioned ring pulls off a Diet Coke on my finger. See? We were just messing. I wore it for a whole year. What am I like? <laughs> Is that rhetorical? <laughs> you got down on one knee. I really don't remember any of this at all. Yes, you do. You got all weepy in A&E, and then you said you'd come so close to losing me that you wanted to hold on to me forever. <laughs> you soppy twat. <laughs> yeah, me, you silly old cat. OK. <laughs> Look at his face. I am killing him. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me with something to do. <laughs> Did you set a date? Book a church? It wasn't a big deal. Oh, just a registry office then. Were it just clothes fettlers and a bit of bread and dripping? Oh, I'd forgotten all about it. Oh, I see. Any other engagements you'd forgotten all about? Perhaps a couple of actual marriages that have slipped your mind? It was a stupid, silly thing. It wasn't real. It didn't mean anything. Getting engaged didn't mean anything. I wish I'd known that when you proposed to me. That was different. Me and you actually ended up getting married, unlike me and Karen. Yeah, why was that? What? Who finished with who? I can't remember. Oh, I see. She dumped you. I was second choice. Oh, get a grip. Of course you weren't second choice. Yes, I was. Only in terms of order, like Kim Jong-il coming before Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Strike that. Let me try again. Just think how much better life could have been if Karen had said yes. No, it wouldn't. I meant for me. <laughs> yeah, OK, understood. Thanks, Geoffrey. Hang on. Are you talking to me whilst you're in the bathroom? Yeah. Good God. <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> this conversation's taken a bit of a turn. Lee, are you speaking to me naked? I don't know, I can't see you. <laughs> Sorry, I've got to go, Geoffrey. Lucy wants to use the bathroom to kill a pig. <laughs> Bye. Didn't want to speak to him? Not in the bathroom, no. Why'd you bring him in here? You know he's not actually inside the magic speaking box, <laughs> don't you? Not that odd, using a phone in the bathroom. Well, not for the man who goes to the toilet when he's in a phone box. <laughs> Next time my dad calls, can you take it in the living room? Have a bit of dignity. You have got to be kidding me. What's the problem? I'm still here. And? Well, I just think there should be a bit of mystery surrounding these things. What do you want me to do? Reach in and whip out a bunch of flowers? <laughs> Why are you suddenly so bothered? I sometimes go to the toilet when you're in the shower. Do you? Don't look so shocked. You go to the toilet while you're in the shower. <laughs> look, if it's bothering you so much, leave. Uh, I'm cleaning my teeth. Use the kitchen sink. You use the kitchen sink. OK. Uh, excuse me. Can you, uh, close the door, please? Unbelievable. <laughs> Here's your orange juice. Has it got bits in? No. But I want bits in. <laughs> there. Now it's got bits in. I'm off to work. Those rockets aren't going to fly themselves, are they, Molly? You don't have to keep attending Nora National, Daddy. We'll love you whatever you do. I sell cars. That's rubbish! <laughs> right, I'm going. OK, see you later. Is that it? What? Well, aren't you going to miss me? I don't know. Are you going to leave? <laughs> if you say goodbye to me properly. Wow, but not in front of the kids. We'll traumatise them. What's your problem this morning? I'll tell you my problem. Where's the intimacy gone in our relationship? I just did a great big wee in front of you. That's fairly intimate. <laughs> well, it's not very romantic, is it? Oh, I'm sorry I don't go to the toilet romantically enough. Maybe next time I'll sit there playing the harp. <laughs> After all, you sometimes sound like you're in there with a tuba. Look, 
It's not just the toilet thing, it's romance in general. Do you know that since we've had the kids, we haven't had a single night away, just the two of us? So? That's your choice just as much as mine? No, it's not. Do you remember what I asked for on my last birthday? Oh, not this again. The Orient Express is very expensive. What did the next best thing? The next best thing to the Orient Express is not Pizza Express. <laughs> and you know it's not just about the money. OK, so I don't like leaving the kids with other people. I want to be near them in case they need me. Mummy, there's a burnt bill on my toes. Well, phone social services. <laughs> All right, what about tonight? Me and you, go out for something to eat. I'll find us a nice restaurant. Sounds nice. But... Well, if we go out, we only have to come back and we're already here. All that dressing up, choosing a restaurant. Yeah, it's not easy, is it, putting clothes on and eating? <laughs> Maybe we should just stay at home in our pants and suck on a damp flannel. <laughs> OK, we'll stay at home, but we're doing it properly. I'll cook us dinner. We don't watch television, we don't eat until the kids are in bed. OK, if you insist. If I insist? I'm not asking you to dress as a lollipop lady and spank me with the sign. <laughs> it's supposed to be romantic. OK, so I'm saying yes, fine, OK? Great. Well, I look forward to it, then. Well, then, so will I. Fine. <laughs> Are you two getting divorced? <laughs> Just eat your orange juice. <laughs> Are they hiding in the cupboard under the stairs? No, they're not in the cupboard under the stairs. Are they hiding under the kitchen table? No, they're not hiding under the kitchen table. <laughs> Where can they be? Maybe I should look behind the curtains. No, they're not behind the curtains. We are behind the curtains. <laughs> I meant under the carpet. <laughs> Charlie's been sick at Beavers. Don't worry, son. I once sneezed at an otter. <laughs> oh, why is it so gloomy in here? I was going for an ambience. It's the ambulance for me. Not an ambulance, an ambience. It means when you're trying to create an ambience. <laughs> oh. oh, so that's where they are. I have no idea. We did you. Oh, that was your voice, was it? I'll cancel the priest. <laughs> Let's get them to bed. Well, I can't help tonight, can I? I'm cooking, remember? Oh, yeah. OK, I'll sort the kids out. Well, what are you doing? Just grabbing a banana. I'm starving. Come on. Oh, no, no, don't grab a banana. It'll spoil dinner. Why? Is that what we're having? <laughs> Molly, you know when you do that, it's not your birthday, a fairy dies. <laughs> Daddy's busy. I'm just trying to create an atmosphere. Well, I'm hungry and the kids are upset, so well done. Mission accomplished. <laughs> oh, you've changed. No big deal. Same pants. <laughs> they must be due their annual service soon. <laughs> hmm. Looks lovely. Thanks. It's a Jamie Oliver thing. I was going to do Heston, but I didn't have a hydro-evacuated testicular spatula. <laughs> it's a Moroccan lamb dish made with loads of different spices and cooked in a sauce made from... made from chicken beaks and cat's faces. Oh, sounds lovely. Are you texting? No. Nope. Yes, you are. You're on the phone. I know, but I'm not texting. I was on Tinder. <laughs> and I'm just looking up Charlie's symptoms. Well, whilst you're on the NHS website, you might want to look up the medical effects of having a lamb tagine force-fed down your esophagus. <laughs> Charlie will be fine. Come on, it's supposed to be a romantic meal. It took me ages to do this cooking. Thanks. And I do appreciate you going to the same effort I go to every night. <laughs> in fact, if this is the effect it has, I should go to the toilet in front of you more often. <laughs> it wasn't just the toilet thing. I just worry sometimes that we're not concentrating on each other as much as we should be. Is this you asking me for more sex? No. Well, are you about to suggest? No. It's not about sex. <laughs> about me and you not forgetting to be romantic with each other, like we are being now. Look, Lee, I really appreciate everything you've done tonight, and it's sweet that you're so concerned about us, but honestly, we're doing fine. I love you, 
along with the kids, you're the most important thing in my life, and I don't take that for granted ever. And I certainly don't think I've lost the romance. You sure? I'm sure. OK. Happy anniversary. <laughs> well, are you going to open it? It's not today, is it? Oh, I think it is. <laughs> well, you're obviously overwhelmed. I'll open it for you. Well, are you, are you sure it isn't tomorrow? Oh, no, tomorrow is a different special day altogether. It's the one-day anniversary of the day that you forgot our anniversary. <laughs> special vintage hourglass we saw in that antique shop. Well, I haven't really forgotten our anniversary. Oh, so? I'll give you three minutes to think of something. <laughs> Well, maybe there's a present waiting for you to unwrap when we get upstairs. Oh, an actual present? Could be. Or do you mean me taking your clothes off? Because unless you've got some Debenhams vouchers tucked under there, that doesn't count. <laughs> so this is why you've been acting odd all day, going on about the lack of romance. Oh, Lucy, forget about it. It doesn't matter. This is just a silly little something to say that the sands of time are like my love for you, always flowing. And if, at times, our love has the appearance of ebbing away, you just have to put a little bit of effort in, and very soon you can turn things round and see the love flowing once again. I hate you. <laughs> I can't believe how much this pub has changed. I might be wrong, but isn't that the exact spot where I asked you to be my wife? It's a totally different shape to what it used to be. Yeah, but you're great with the kids. <laughs> Look at me and smile. I can't do both. <laughs> sorry, quick reminder, uh, all phones need to be put away. Oh, um, sorry. Are you sure this is what you wanted to do on our 10th wedding anniversary? The pub quiz? Yeah, I told you. I just want a relaxing and casual night. Relaxing? With Anna and Toby? Promise me we'll never end up like those two. We won't. We'll divorce long before it gets that bad. Are you still writing for Clinton cards? <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Toby, we're late again. Who still uses an A to Z? Research suggests that using navigation apps increases the risk of dementia. Really? I make a point of using Google Maps, but it's no good. I still keep remembering we're married. <laughs> Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary! Are we all right? If that's the team name suggestion, we've already got one. Quiz de Berg. Oh, actually, no, apparently Quiz de Berg's already been taken. Oh, goodbye. Oh, I don't know. That lady in red? <laughs> well, let's go with Quarit then. Whatever that means. Oh, that wasn't a team name suggestion. Quarate is Latin. It means enough people to begin proceedings. And that is why we're going to win with our secret weapon, Toby. Why is Toby the secret weapon? Yeah, what about me? Well, and you as well, of course, Anna. Toby is the secret weapon, but you're more of an obvious weapon, like a... Weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> Just because he's a doctor, everyone assumes he's the brains in the relationship. It's infuriating. I think you're both equally going to win this for us. Both? What am I? Just the eye candy. <laughs> I always beat him at Trivial Pursuit, you know. Tell her. Tell her what? That I always beat you at Trivial Pursuit. You have literally just told her. I'm sure she remembers. Even without the piercing eyes. <laughs> the two of you are going to be our secret weapon. Can you actually see me? <laughs> Sorry, yes, and you are also our secret weapon. Like a... I don't know, something... Unexpected and deadly. Like a silent fart. <laughs> <laughs> I am just as clever as you lot, you know. What, even the great Dr Toby? Oh, I'm sorry if I offended you, Anna. And what about me? Do I get an apology? What for? For calling me thick. I didn't call you thick. You didn't need to call me thick. It's obvious. Do you need me in this conversation? I don't know. Do you need me in this team? Of course. Yes, the Beatles wouldn't have been the Beatles without Ringo. <laughs> Get a room. A little library room full of books about Latin. Just the two of you. You'd be a nice little quarret. Quorum. Quarret is the adjective. Quorum is the noun. Oh, f off. And why is it just the two of them, Lee? Why am I not allowed in this library of cleverness? Oh, I see. So you're bothered about your own absence, but mine makes complete sense, does it? Look how 
you like? It's your bloody library. Oh, thank you very much. If you need me, I'll be in the children's section with a copy of Peter and Jane Go to the Beach. I won't be reading it, I'll be licking it. <laughs> That's not funny. You said it. <laughs> I'm much cleverer than you, Lucy, you bimbo. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, sorry. Do you not understand English? Toby, could you translate it for it into Latin? Ego malignant. Oh, shot it. <laughs> You're not cleverer than me. Well, let's find out, shall we? Where are you going? To be my own team. Team Lee. Then we'll find out who's the stupid one. Yeah, the person sitting at a table alone on his wedding anniversary. <laughs> it's not a fair contest if it's three against one, Lee. It will be if I join him. Makes sense. The best and the worst against the middle two. And who says you're number one and I'm number two? Oh, I see. So I'm automatically number three, is that it? <laughs> and yet not a single debate about number four. <laughs> well, I'm certainly not number four. Why? Why can't you be number four? Do you know. <laughs> oh, I see. Right. Well, if I'm definitely number four and I go in number one, it would be a fair contest. Agreed? Agreed. Right. The question is, who do you want on your team, honey? Who's number one? Oh, what are you waiting for, Toby, you moron? Come on. Sit down. <laughs> that is so rude. I'm number one, and that is why I am going with Thicko. <laughs> And don't forget tonight, guys, you're playing for the grand prize of a yard of Twix. Oh, that'll save me a trip to the airport. I don't care about actually winning. As long as I beat Toby, I will personally buy you a metre of Twix. And that's even longer than a yard. I know I'm being patronised, but can I have this in writing? <laughs> don't worry. I don't care about winning either. I just want to beat Lucy. Good. Do you know how we're going to beat them? Teamwork. Yes, teamwork. I'm going to give you all the answers and you're going to write them down. <laughs> and I do not want to lose points because of your spelling. You really are a condescending cannot. <laughs> right, good luck everyone. Here we go. Round one, question one. The lateral epicondyle bone can be found in which part of the human body? Nice easy question to start. Exactly. I know it, I just can't remember how to spell it. L-E-G. <laughs> Maybe you should just write the answers. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, biology, Toby's bound to know this. Put fingers. Is it fingers? I've no idea, but there's loads of bones in there. Well, on that basis, I could put the British Museum or Deuce and the Family Butchers. <laughs> I'll put fingers. <laughs> question two is on sport. Yes. And uh, the sporting question is badminton. Oh, faff. Badminton isn't a sport. It's a hobby for middle-class people who are too weak to play tennis. <laughs> Bloody hell. Toby loves badminton. When playing a singles or doubles game in badminton, how many points do you need to win? Are you sure? I play badminton every week. I love it. And I love you, Toby. Please don't show me any affection. It'll throw me. Lee won't know this. I bet he thinks the question is about the game you play with shuttlecocks and a racket. It is. Oh, I thought it meant the horse trials. How can that be doubles? You can fit two people on a horse. They're massive. Question three coming up. What should I put? Four. Four? It'd be more than that to win a game of badminton. Is it? Well, put a hundred. Won't be that much. OK. Five. Shall I just put fingers again? <laughs> oh, God, we're going to get hammered. No, we're not. Toby's been lucky with the first two, but it can't go on like this. In Latin? Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Right, once my glamorous assistants have finished collecting the answer sheets, I'll go through the answers for round one. I reckon we got all ten. And when I say we, I do, of course, mean you. It was a team effort. You got the one on Celebrity Juice. Oh, that's Lee's favourite programme, not mine. He thinks if he watches Keith Lemon, it counts towards his five a day. <laughs> well, that went well. 
What kind of quiz asks questions that I don't know the answer to? It's just someone talking and me having to listen. Oh, I appreciate that must be new territory for you. <laughs> OK, all your papers are in, so here are the answers. Question one. The lateral epicondyle bone can be found in which part of the human body? L-E-G spells. Arm. <laughs> Arm. Uh, I will also accept... Leg. Elbow. <laughs> How can you not know that? You're a doctor. I'm a gynaecologist. You don't really come across many bones. <laughs> question two was the badminton question, and the answer was that you need 21 points to win. 21? You put seven. I, I got confused between badminton and dwarves. How can you not know the scoring system if you play every week? I'll let the umpire take care of that. I just concentrate on the game. That cock's not going to shuttle itself. <laughs> What's going on, Toby? OK, fine. I'm sorry, Lucy, I deliberately gave wrong answers. I'm playing against Anna. Anna has to win. Is this why she always wins at Trivial Pursuit? Of course it is. Trust me, to her, board games are extremely untrivial. <laughs> Once I almost beat her at Cluedo. Do you know what she did? What? She almost beat me. <laughs> in the conservatory with the lead piping. And finally, question ten. The presenter of Celebrity Juice is Keith Lemon. Well, thank God one of us watches ITV2. I don't even watch ITV1. I can only imagine the horror of two. <laughs> There's an ITV3 and four as well. Good God. How many sticky toffee cheesecakes do Iceland need to sell? 